Hi everyone and welcome to the video. In this video we shall be discussing historical x-ray tubes. So under historical x-ray tubes we will be discussing basically gas tube and Coolidge tube. So these are the two tubes that we are going to discuss in this video. So first we have the gas tube. So in the beginning we were using gas filled tubes in order to produce x-rays. Later on the gas tube was replaced by Coolidge tube. Coolidge tube is very much similar to the modern x-ray tube that we use today. Now let's see uh, each tubes in detail. So first we shall discuss about gas tube. So in the beginning as I said we were using gas filled tubes. Presently we are using uh, x-ray tubes with vacuum condition but in the earlier days we were using gas filled x-ray tubes to produce x-rays. So these tubes it has got two electrodes similar to the modern x-ray tube. It has got a cathode and an anode. They are kept in a sealed glass tube at opposite ends. So in gas tube the cathode is made up of aluminium stem with concave aluminium disc. The anode is made up of tungsten or platinum backed with copper. And also a provision is made in order to evacuate the tube to different degrees of vacuum. That means we have to adjust the presence of gas inside the uh, gas x-ray tube. Then the tube vacuum it must be always less than 0 0.001 mm of mercury. Now let's see gas tube in detail. So this is the gas tube. So the entire arrangement inside the gas tube it is placed inside a glass envelope filled with gas. So it has got a positive anode that is known as a target and a negative cathode. So cathode here this is the aluminium stem this is the aluminium disc. This is the target. So the target is made up of either tungsten or platinum backed with copper. So this is how a gas tube looks like. Let's see what are the disadvantages of this gas tube. The first disadvantage is that the ionization potential of the gas. It always depends upon the degree of evacuation of the tube. That means if there is a, a large amount of residual gas present inside the tube then the x-ray produced will be of lower voltage. Now if you have to increase the voltage beyond the ionization what happens the tube current will increase enormously and this will lead to melting of the target. So this is one of the defect of the gas tube that means we have to maintain the gas at a constant level inside the gas x-ray tube. The next effect is the energy of x-rays and the intensity of x-rays are always interlinked. That means in order to increase the penetrating power we have to increase the evacuation of the glass at, uh, also we have to apply high voltage. That means we, we have to continuously use a vacuum pump so as to uh, operate this x-ray tube. That means the, this type of apparatus it will require more skill to operate. That, uh, so as I said already a constant um, amount of gas should be maintained inside the gas tube. So that means uh, the proper evacuation of the gas has to be maintained. For this purpose we, uh, we supply the tube with a vacuum pump and thus to operate this type of tubes will require more skill. The third one is as the tube operates the ions gradually diminishes resulting in higher vacuum. That means fresh gas has to be injected into the tube with the help of gas regenerators. Now because of this disadvantage, uh, because of all these disadvantages the gas tubes are not practically used these days. Now let's see the second type that is Coolidge tube. So Coolidge tube it is based on the principle of thermionic emission. So I have explained uh, what is thermionic emission um, and how um, the x-rays are produced uh, by the phenomenon of thermionic emission in modern x-ray tubes. So the, cool, the modern x-ray tubes are uh, basically uh, they are based on this Coolidge tube. So the process or the phenomenon of thermionic emission it was first explained by Fleming and Richardson 
Now later a new X-ray tube based on these uh, um, thermionic emission principle was designed by a scientist known as Coolidge in the year 1913. So in honor of this scientist we named this tube as Coolidge tube. So this tube was also known as hot cathode or electron tube. So the other name of Coolidge tube is hot cathode tube or electron tube. And as I said already, all modern X-ray tubes, they are based on the principle of this Coolidge tube. So that was all about the historical X-ray tubes. So here I'm not explaining Coolidge tube much because it is very much similar to the modern X-ray tube. So we have a vacuum condition inside it. We have a cathode, we have an anode. Um, so by the process of thermionic emission in the cathode, the electrons are generated. These electrons will move towards the anode. It will bombard against the anode and uh, leads to the production of X-rays. So uh, the Coolidge tube, it is very much similar to the modern X-ray tube that I have already explained in the previous videos. And that is why I am not uh, giving uh, too much explanation on Coolidge tube. I am just limiting my words because uh, it is very much similar to the modern X-ray tube. That means the entire structure and uh, uh, the construction and working of the modern X-ray tube, it is completely based on this Coolidge tube. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe.